my drama class, there was this teacher, and um, her name was Miss Akaro, of course, it's hard to forget, and she had her favorite, you know, students who got all the roles, and I wasn't one of them. And uh, I'll never forget that. I don't know if you guys ever had a teacher, someone who you think should believe in you, but doesn't believe you can do it. So, yeah, I proved her wrong. Anywho, um, <laughs> uh, uh, regardless what people think, what you have in your heart and soul, just follow it because some people just don't have it in them and maybe they're just visualizing, you know, throwing something at you because they know they can't do it. So maybe they're, I don't know what it is, but that's their problem. You do you, you know what I mean? One way ticket. like a Dos Caminos, in a way, Baja Fresh. Do you guys know Baja Fresh? Uh, it's almost like a McDonald's for Mexican food. And every time I saw like a cute boy, I'd give him a fountain drink, I'm like, it's on me. <laughs> <laughs> when I met this girl that worked in the underage club, um, she, remember she had a car, she had like her Honda Civic. I was like, wow, she has a Honda Civic. That is so cool. So I was taking the bus, so anything was, you know, with four wheels was amazing. I'm surrounded by these kids who love to party in this, like, who have all this money and, like, I don't have anything at the time, but I'm around these kids. This girl, Rebecca, had an idea. She's like, you know, you can come live with me in this really dope, like, apartment, and I'll drive you to school every day. I was like, okay. <laughs> hey, mom. Dominican mother who changed her whole life, who's not a doctor now because of me. I'm gonna leave you. I was like, mom, can I talk to you? And she's, she's from New York, from Queens, you know? She's like, I was like, so mom, I really don't like that Jose's moving in, so um, I wanna move out. And she's like, you wanna be an adult, Jackie? Okay, go ahead, be an adult, but don't come back. I was like, all right, my house is outside. Bye, Maha. I literally left her that day. It was terrible. And she's like, come on, hug me. I don't know if I'll see you again, because she was like really pissed off. So, um, I mean, I'm telling you the, you know, the, not the whole version. She, she was not happy. <laughs> um, and I kind of ran away. Anyway, so. <laughs> I thought was amazing was not because her mother stopped sending her money um, so we had to find a new place to live and of course I went back to my mother and I said can Rebecca and I stay here while we find a place she's like oh no honey you want to go be an adult go be an adult we slept in cars we slept in, in the Honda Civic that I love so much and we slept in you know friends couches and it was, it was a crazy little like Hollywood life that was not for me. You know, one Wango Tango concert tickets and we're driving and she's racing this guy. And I do remember telling her, slow down, are you crazy? And she tried to slow down, but she lost control of the wheel. And she hit the curb. The car flipped three times. I was not wearing my seatbelt. I went out the window, um, 20 feet away from the car. Uh, and my, my forehead was left in the pavement. Uh, I don't remember anything. Supposedly, uh, I got up, I said I was okay, and then I, I fainted. My friend, Rebecca, who was you know, supposed to be my best friend, she was calling her mother, hey mom, I don't have a license, what do I do? And I'm dying over here in the corner, right? I was saved by a stranger, I don't even know his name. Uh, he was a guy on a bicycle, he called 911, he stayed in the hospital until my family got there. And one day I'll find him and thank him for saving my life. But, um, so I get rushed to the hospital and they had to shave my head completely because I had a blood clot in my brain. Um, so I woke up two weeks later not knowing what happened with a tube down my throat. And um, I get up, I look at myself in the mirror. And I had to look at myself this way because my eyes were crooked. 
Then I tried to smile, but I couldn't because my face was paralyzed. So I couldn't see myself well, and I couldn't smile, and it was not who I was. So my life completely changed, you know, as a teenager, and every, all my dreams died that day because I grew up watching beautiful people on TV, you know what I mean, and not people that look like me. So I'm in New York, and I, uh, I'm working at another nightlife cl um, club, Lavo, and I meet this girl, and her name is Karina. She's not here. <laughs> she's amazing, I think she's good. And she's from Ecuador, and she had the most unique accent I've ever heard. And she would like get a little tipsy on tequila while we work, and she shouldn't drink. And she would be like, don't mess with my three M's, my man, my money, and my mama. She had a crush on the manager, and he was teaching me a little bit on the computer, and I was like, oh, it was over my shoulder. And then she came up, she's like, I saw you talking to my man. I was like, he was teaching me how to use a computer? And he has a girlfriend, you crazy. And she was like, she was just like, oh, did he say anything about me? I'm like, oh my God. So this girl, she, she would just get wasted and like be funny. I had this, uh, another friend who was an actress and I was like, yo, I want to get into acting again. So she brought me to her manager and my first audition in New York was for Flacca. And it was, again, two lines and it said, feisty Latina. So I thought about my friend Karina. She's feisty. So I imitated her, right? You can't put your sticky ice cream shit in here. Like literally. <laughs> brother, he's from New York, we were raised separate, and he's very New York from Queens. And he, he was helping me with my accent. And I got out of the audition, and I, you know, I, I did a good job. I didn't see anyone else audition, I was the first one there. And I left, and I called my brother, and I was like, yo, I think I got this, son. I think I got this. And the car's gonna roll me over. I was like, what the fuck, you gonna roll me over? Like, I was so into it. I was like super method. So, <laughs> two weeks go by and I get the call that I got the job, right? Here I am thinking it's just one day and it's with Tasty, right? So they called me for it again and then they called me for it again and I had seven, seven episodes in the first season and then my, my character just continued to grow and for me, I just feel validated as an actress because, as a, because I've learned so much from the show and they made me series regular after working for them three years. So that was amazing. And now I get to work with like the most beautiful, talented people in the world. And, and I learned everything on that show. And I, I grew up on that show. And I don't know, I just feel like it was so meant, meant for me. And I, and I go back to all the times that people screwed me. You know, like, the guy, the girl who, like, basically almost killed me in my car accident. Then the guy who said he believed in me and took my money. <laughs> then I signed a terrible contract, you know. And there's a lot of, a lot of things that happen in your life and you don't know why, and you're frustrated, and you're like, God, please help me, like, what the heck? But honestly, they're all meant for something and to make you stronger. I had this amazing idea because listen, Hollywood is, is not for everybody, right? But it is. So I'm, I'm tired of working so hard and not being able to like get in the door. I am in the door, but it's not how you think, right? So I'm creating my own lane for people like me, people that are underrepresented in Hollywood, right? So I'm starting my own production company called Unspoken Film. I am shooting three shorts this year. And I had this incredible idea for this movie that I'm still shooting. And um, I'm not gonna say who it is, but it's this girl. She's a white girl. She stole this, my idea. It was a brown story and she made it white. And she, I'm not gonna tell you who's producing it, but it's one of the top producers in the world. I get an audition for my own role, right? That's how I found out. And her face is, is in the short that I, that's my short. So, Again, I'm doing my story because she stole the surface, not the heart, right? Because it was my idea and my author wrote it and that comes from her. She doesn't even know. 
So I saw the short and it's good. And again, I was very angry and I cried and I don't understand why I keep getting screwed over. But that again, just lit a fire under me. Honestly, this girl just lit it up because I felt like I wasn't enough to play that role. And then when she stole it from me, oh, I was like, oh, I'm so, I'm more than enough. So now she smiled at me at a party. Let's say it was like a Netflix party. She smiled, she said, Jackie, and I swear it was like Satan. <laughs> <laughs> how can you screw me and then smile at me? That's crazy, that's what Hollywood is. This is just the beginning for me, and if you leave here with anything, leave here knowing that whatever you have in your heart and your soul, whatever you want to do, trust me, that is what you're meant to do. Trust me, because it wouldn't be in your heart for no reason. And just follow it, and please don't put a timeline limit on your dream. My dream started at seven years old. My role for Flack Eye was like 25 when I got it, just so you know. Work hard, work on your craft, never stop learning, and, and have more than one dream. You can do many things. Anyways, that's from me and Black Eye. Love you. Okay, so we're on our way. We're gonna try to meet Jackie because I hope there's not a lot of people. We kind of left early because we want to get them before everybody else. That's creepy as fuck. I wouldn't do that <laughs> shit.